grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's a wonderful thing about a good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. There's also a funny thing about a door. A door has two sides. And there's a blessed thing about Jesus, that he is both good shepherd and door. Now in our text today, Jesus teaches that he is the good shepherd. But if we go back a few verses, he also taught that he is the door of the sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The 10th chapter of the Gospel of St. John gives us this great good news that couldn't be as great if it were just one or the other, if Jesus is just the shepherd or just the door. But he is both good shepherd who protects his sheep and the door that locks out those who threaten. And it's a good thing about a shepherd who's also a door, that there are those two sides. On one side of the door, there is grace and there's mercy. There's a good and loving shepherd who cares for his sheep. He opens to provide food and nourishment as he leads them out to pasture, out to streams of living water. But he closes to provide protection from thieves, from hired hands, from wolves, the terms that Jesus uses in our text for false shepherds. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches and scatters them. On one side of the door of Jesus, there is mercy. On the other side of that same door, there is judgment. In our first reading today, Peter and John stood before the Jewish council, those who should have been the shepherds of Israel. But the apostles were on trial because they'd been proclaiming the resurrection in the name of Jesus. And the council was greatly annoyed, so Peter and John, they, they gave an account. Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. Peter then goes on to explain Jesus is that stone that the builders rejected, the stone that has become the cornerstone, the stone that is the foundation of his church. And there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, some of the false shepherds had revealed their true colors immediately before this reading. In the ninth chapter of John, Jesus healed a man who was blind from birth. The Jews took issue with this healing because it had been done on the Sabbath. Jesus did not respect their laws, so they rejected him, and they refused to believe him. They threw the man who had been healed out of the synagogue. And yet when Jesus found him and revealed to him that he is the Christ, the man believed in Jesus and worshipped Jesus. The good shepherd was to him the open door. But to those who rejected him, 
he was clothed. One way for us to maybe think of this is an earlier act of God's salvation. The door that at God's command Noah and his sons built into the ark. On the day it started to rain, Noah and his family huddled inside the ark. But who was it that closed the door? It was the hand of God. As the door shut, the rain that fell for God's judgment on earth was kept safely outside. For Noah and his family, for those who had faith and believed in God, the door provided protection. And then when the flood subsided and the waters were gone, the door opened and Noah went out to find God's blessing on the earth. The door shut for protection. The door opened for blessing. But to those outside the ark, the door meant judgment. The door was shut to those who did not believe. And they perished. It's the same door, but that door is receiving much different, seen in very different ways, depending on which side of the door you're facing. And so the same can be said of Jesus. Those of us who believe are on the inside of the door. For us, Jesus is the good shepherd who lays down his life for us. He knows us. He loves us. And likewise, we know him. We follow. We know the sound of his voice, and we follow where he leads. But to those who do not believe in Jesus, he is a harsh judge. They are blind and unable to see his goodness or his mercy, and they reject him. They reject him, and they reject those who believe him. The formerly blind man was put out of the synagogue because he confessed faith in Jesus. Peter and John were arrested for teaching and for healing in the name of Jesus. And so also you, brothers and sisters, as you go in and go out and follow Jesus, hearing his word, recognizing his voice, following him to green pastures and to living waters, being defended against the wolves, the thieves, the hirelings, being prodded ever so gently back to the green pasture and away from the danger that tempts us. You will receive Jesus as your Lord and Master, as your good shepherd. But since he is rejected by the outside world, that outside world also rejects they will hate you. They will try to silence you, even as the Jews hated Peter and John and the man formerly blind. But you are safe. Just as Noah was safe from the wind and the waves and the flood as the waters rose and destroyed the earth, likewise you are safe from God's judgment. And just as Noah and his family were protected from the waters that rose to destroy the earth, you are protected from the wrath of God. Just as sheep who are tucked safely away inside the sheep fold, you are protected from the dark of the night, from the wolves that lurk in the shadow. Just like that, you are protected from the devil, from his angels. Inside the church you are safe where God feeds and nourishes you. You hear his voice as it is brought to you through the preaching of his word. You drink from the living water that flows from his farm. You eat the food that he has prepared at his banquet table. The bread and the wine that are the true body and most precious blood. Given and shed to offer you the forgiveness of sins and life salvation. I grew up watching a lot of old TV shows. One that I always enjoyed was Let's Make a Deal. The contestants, for those of you that don't know this old show, well, they were given a prize. 
And then they had the opportunity to trade that prize, which they knew, for something that was hidden behind a door. And the show was exciting, and it was entertaining, because you never knew what was going to be behind that door. Maybe a new car. Maybe a dream vacation. Or maybe something utterly and absolutely worthless. Well, Jesus, the door of sheep, he beckons you to come to him, to enter through him, to knock so that he will open. In your hands we hold the prizes of this earth, the world in all its glory. And we are tempted with that theory that says, well, the bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. We're tempted to say, I have these things that I know, that I can touch, that I can see. Security in my home, a nice house, a safe pension. We're tempted then to reject Jesus to deny his gifts. But behind this door that is the good shepherd, behind that door we actually know what is there. There lies heaven and all its glory, all the blessings of God Almighty given for you. He opens the door to give you blessings. Brothers and sisters, come Hear his voice. Enter through that door that is Jesus and find your good shepherd waiting for you. By this we know love, that he has laid down his life, that we may have life everlasting. Alleluia. Christ is risen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds. Christ Jesus. Amen.